Now here with the Richmond Spiders here at Media Day Live here at M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Baltimore Ravens, head coach Russ Huseman. We have Andrew Clyde down here on the left, Deshaun Brissett here on my right. Gentlemen, welcome to Media Day. How's it been so far here in the later stages? Yeah, it, it's been a good time. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, how was the uh, social station over there? You guys play Madden? We, we didn't play yeah. Madden. You didn't play Madden? We didn't play Madden, but we won everything else. The trivia, we yeah. got trivia? that. You know. Did you go up against some trivia? Uh, uh, William, and William and Mary and Stony Brook. Oh. Yeah. Richmond, William and Mary. Richmond, nice. Win there you go. <laughs> I like I like it. It. Yeah. The rivalry yeah. game. The rivalry like began yeah. early yeah. this year. Always. So. Coach, going into year two, you know, last season you guys missed the playoffs. What are what, some of the familiarity now with some of your players maybe coming into year two that maybe you didn't necessarily have in year one and maybe some of the expectations you have coming into this season? Well, I mean, I think we're really familiar with each other now. I mean, it was a it was a learning curve, mm -hmm. uh, you know, them having to get up, get to know us, us get to know them. But uh, I think we've built some great relationships with our players. Mm -hmm. They're used to what we're doing offensively and defensively. Uh, we've got talented players, so I think year two is going to be a lot better. Talk a little bit about. I mean, Kyle Loletta, uh I coach at Downingtown East High School, so we talk about Kyle all the time up there, and. You know, losing a guy like that, and obviously you only had him for one year, but what does that do for you offensively as you go into the camp? Yeah, I mean, losing Kyle is, is huge. I mean, such a great player, a great person. I think these guys know the type of person and leader he was. Uh, just being around him for a year was, was, was fantastic for us. But we feel good about the guy we got coming back uh, in Kevin Johnson. Uh, you know, and I may let uh, uh, Deshaun talk about him a little bit, but – you know, Kevin went through last spring, the whole every rep in the spring last last spring, and then he was our number two guy all fall. We never put him in a game and got the red shirt back. So I think these guys got a lot of confidence in Kevin. He's got a great skill set. Uh, he can throw it. He can spin it, and and, uh, and I think he'll give us a little bit more in the run game. Yeah, yeah, Deshaun, we got to see a little bit of Kevin two years ago in the playoffs. What do you expect from him? Do you see a lot of improvements even from that playoff run? He was quite impressive. Happened yeah. to come in for Kyle late in the season. Yeah, it was definitely impressive to see him come in and just step into a role immediately. Um, we expect nothing different from Kev. He's going to come in and do the same thing. We talk about his confidence all the time. He's really confident in what he can do, and we're confident in him as well. The fact that he was able to just come in and take us to the quarterfinals like that mm -hmm. and just, just to see his focus kind of shift into another gear was kind of impressive to me. And I, I'm his friend. Like we, we were roommates soft, roommate sophomore year. And just to see him focus like that was kind of promising. And so I think he's going to come in and do the same thing this year. You're feeling good? You got, have you guys been able to work a lot this summer, toss the ball a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. We go out there all the time. You know, as older guys, we try to get the young guys to come out there with us. But me and him, Tyler Wilkins, we, we go out there and we run routes all the time. And, you know, we're trying to get the chemistry down. And it's not that hard, honestly. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I was going to say they got quite a bit of weapons coming back for Mr. Johnson this year. It, guys like Deshaun Brissett and, like I said, Tyler Wilkins. Some, a lot of weapons that will be a lot of pieces around Kevin. Yeah, I mean, Kevin's just got to kind of distribute the ball. I mean, we yeah. love our wide outs, obviously. Uh, you know, the, the, what they did last year was, was they, they all had really good years. Mm -hmm. And then we get Jamal Bevels back, a, yep. a fourth guy who had played a lot the previous year. Uh, so, you know, we feel good about it. And I think Kevin will be able to get the ball to him. And then we got all our running backs back. So, you know, Kevin coming into this thing has a lot of help around him. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, and like, like, like they said, uh, He's got a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's a confident kid, uh, but uh, I love him. And, and uh, I, I knew from day one when I saw him in the spring that he could be a fantastic uh, college quarterback. Now flipping sides, Andrew, I know we haven't talked any defense yet, so we're not trying to leave you out over here. But the CA SAC leader, All-American last year, you know, what were the keys to your personal success on the field last year? What really worked for you to, you know, to contribute at that high level? Um, I think, and this wasn't just me, this was our whole D-line, but we kind of found our own roles within the D-line. We found out what we were good at, and then, um, you know, we tried to put ourselves in the positions to do that. So it was preparation each week, knowing the O-line tendencies. You know, these guys, whenever our media guys come in to do an interview, they have to kick me out of the film room. It's, it's just putting in work that I guess you don't see on the practice field that really makes you succeed in my mind. You're going to have a target on you this year, right? So you, you, you get all those sacks. You're the guy now that they're going to game plan for. You're going to get the double teams. You're going to get the chips, those types of things. How are you going to handle that? Um, you know, just go out there, put my head down, and try to do what I've been doing. But if they're spending all that effort on me, we've got three other D linemen that can really get after it, and that will just make their jobs that much easier. 
What about some of the improvements this defense looked to make this offseason? What, what have you seen on other sides, the linebacking core, the secondary? What, what big improvements have you seen as a whole? On I think it's, like I said earlier, just everyone knows their roles now. Um, with the new defense, I think every person on the defense was put into a spot where they had, you know, might not played before, might not have been in that exact position before. And I think you saw us get more comfortable throughout the past season. We were able to carry that into spring ball summer and now heading into you know, fall training camp. We're really excited by where we are. Dejan, talk a little bit about year two in a new offense, right? You know, there, there's a learning curve. You get a new coach last year. You know, the new system comes in with it. You guys are all really comfortable with it now. You're feeling good going into camp? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we talked about it earlier, the growing pains that come with the new coaching staff. We went through those. And so now um, you can see everybody kind of knows where to be and we know what's going on. And not even as an offense, but as a whole team, you can kind of tell by our spring ball and how smooth that was. You know, everybody knew where to go. Everybody knew the, and on offense, we all knew the plays and the play calling. We're kind of familiar with that. So last year, it might've been more of kind of asking around like, hey, what do I got on this play? But now I feel like, especially the older guys too, we kind of know what's coming and we can mentor the younger guys. And so it's kind of a healthy environment now, especially because, you know, we're seasoned into everything. Now to put you guys on the hot spot with the coach right here, we've been asking all the players throughout the day. We'll start with you, Andrew. How much do you love training camp? Training camp? Yeah, training camp. <laughs> all right. yeah, there's the reaction right there. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'll say this. <laughs> Each year it's gotten better. I think as a freshman, you come in and your head's spinning and you're yeah. just trying to understand you know, what's going on. And then sophomore and junior year, you know, you're playing a bit more and you pick it up. Senior year, you've been there, done that, so you're relaxed. You know, it's just going out there and playing ball and you've been doing it for four years now. There's nothing weird about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a grind, but I think that's more so on the younger guys who have to learn the playbook yeah. too than, you know, some of the older guys that are comfortable in the system now. What about you? Training camp, you feel the same way? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> training camp. It, like Clyde said, mentally, it, it, it becomes easier. You're kind of looking at it from like a higher, you know, point. But physically, it's the same thing each year. You know, you got to go in there and every day you're grinding and your legs start to feel it, hamstrings growing a little bit, you know, but mentally, and that, that's a big part of it, obviously. Once you're looking at it from like a veteran or older guy's perspective, it's, it's easier. Coach, it's your second year in the CAA. You got one under your belt now. Moving forward, how, how do you... What was your experience like last year coaching in the in the conference? It was fun. Uh, I kind of I knew because I had been here before, right. so I, I knew what to expect. I knew how good this league was, and the one thing that I figured out: there's a fine line between winning and losing. And I, I think Andrew said it uh, earlier today. You know, very easily we could have won eight, nine, ten right. games, but we went six. And probably a lot of people are saying, "Well, we won nine, ten. We could have won six. So it's, it's a fine line every week. If you're not ready to play, you're going to get your brains beat in. And, and I knew that coming in. I knew it. I had lived it for five years in the CAA. Great league, great coaches, and uh, you better be ready to play. All right, final thoughts, fellas. You open up at UVA. Had uh, just a little bit of success last time you guys played there. Upset the Cavaliers on their home turf for going back there again. Uh, how, first of all, excitement for week one in general and playing at UVA once again, kind of returning to one of your bigger wins probably in your career. Yeah. Um, our goal is to be 1-0 every week, and it's not going to change depending on who we're playing. Um, we kind of get a lot more time to watch film on UVA, obviously, because it's the summertime, and that's kind of what we've been doing on our own. So we're just going to go in and try to focus on the little things and be detail-oriented. Because against those guys, against anybody really, you have to be sound. Yep. But especially against a big FBS team that's going to set the tone for the whole season, we're going to go in there ultra focused and we're going to try to be one and no. You know, that's the goal. And yeah, and I think we both know how much can change in two years also. It's not going to be the same football team yep. on their sideline, just like it's not the same team on ours. So it's just going into that week like any other week, preparing, preparing in the film room and practice and uh, have your mind right come Saturday. All right, Coach Huseman, Andrew Clyde, Deshaun Prasad, thank you so Thanks much so. for joining us here on Media Day Live. Enjoy the rest thank of the day. You. Safe travels. Thank Good you. luck this season. Appreciate Thanks. it.